welcome back to another episode of Exploring with Ash and Jake. If you're new here and you're just dropping in, thank you for your support. But to my OG subscribers, thank you for helping our channel keep up and running. Today we're going to be talking about a mom who thought a slain five-year-old boy was possessed by a demon. Let's get into it. The mother accused of murdering her five-year-old son made social media posts deranged post saying she believed that he was possessed by demons before she killed him and abandoned him in a suitcase. An Indiana detective wrote in a probable cause affidavit last week, Dejan Ludi Anderson, 37, is now on the run from the police who are canvassing the country in search of her. She faces murder charges and the death of her son, Carl Amar Jordan, who police say likely died of dehydration before his body was dumped in a suitcase with a Las Vegas logo emblazoned on it off a royal road in Indiana in April. Detectives publicly announced their search for Anderson on Tuesday, delivering long-awaited answers to the residents of southwest Indiana who searched for answers about the boy and flooded a police tip line with thousands of calls for more than six months. The first break in the case came in June 29th when Indiana State Police were alerted that the fingerprints on the trash bag inside the suitcase belonged to Anderson. They said a month later more fingerprints were discovered that were matched to Don Coleman according to the affidavit. Coleman, 40, was arrested this week in San Francisco on charges of neglect, obstruction of justice. Sergeant Kerry Holes of the Indiana State Police said today that the deputies had hoped to nab Anderson as well, but she wasn't there. It's unclear what Coleman's relationship is to Jordan. A probable cause affidavit sheds light into the mental state of Coleman and Anderson, who appear to become deranged, according to a series of social media posts about demons, vessels, possessed child in the months before Jordan's death. On April 12th, just four days before the child's body was found, by a mushroom hunter, Anderson posted a tweet asking an Indianapolis priest for help with her son, who she claims was possessed and violent. Now, I just want to add my own little commentary here and say, I'm not saying five-year-olds can't be violent, but what she's describing just seems like a manifestation of her own psychosis and or um, psychological issues that she has that went untreated. And had they been treated, I don't think that any of this would have happened. And it's sad that none of the family members checked up on her, considering it seemed like primarily um, that Jordan's dad had custody of him. It's kind of shocking that nobody checked on the mother or her mental state and that everyone thought she was a good mother. Just my I thoughts. have survived death attacks from my five-year-old throughout the five years that he has been alive. The since-deleted post said, according to the affidavit, I have been able to weaken his, quote, powers through our blood. I have his real name, and he is 100 years old. I need assistance. Earlier posts from both women were allegedly shared in a similar tone. Anderson wrote about protection spells, reversal spells, regularly on Facebook. The affidavit said in a January 5th post, she allegedly wrote, Offer reversal spell protection spell, activating your DNA exorcism hex curse. This is a whole demon in a child body. Anderson posted the affidavit says in a separate post on February 19th, she allegedly mentioned a very powerful demonic force from within my son. Coleman frequently posted on social media as well, the affidavit says, and her creepy Facebook profile remained public even on to Thursday. I'm using my blood for this ritual, Cormon wrote to Facebook on January 5th. The affidavit notes the posts themselves weren't the only signs of trouble before Jordan's murder. His mom was arrested twice earlier that year, once in Louisville, Kentucky for shoplifting, and once in South Carolina where she allegedly led officers on a 30-mile police chase after she fled a traffic stop. The affidavit said that the South Carolina officers eventually reached Anderson because she ran out of gas. Even then, however, the 39-year-old resisted, allegedly locking her car doors with Coleman, who she later claimed was her sister, in the passenger seat. And Jordan, also inside the affidavit, said that 
Officers said that they busted through the car's rear window and took Anderson into custody. She spent the night in jail while Coleman and Caro were sent to the nearby Hilton to sleep. The affidavit said Anderson's arrest and Coleman's stay at the Hilton would provoke key key in Indiana detectives' investigation. The fingerprints obtained during the booking in South Carolina is what led them to identify Anderson as a suspect, and cops were able to obtain Coleman's cell phone number from a hotel stay, the affidavit says. That led Indiana detectives to trace location data from the duo's phone to being near the site where Jordan's body was abandoned two days before the suitcase was discovered. Police say that Jordan's body had no trauma when it was found. His cause of death was determined to be from electrolyte imbalance which cops wrote is rare in children, which is rare without neglect. So if you're basically taking care of your children, that will not happen. Um, I did some other further reading, and it just kind of says she wasn't really feeding or hydrating her child, and this is basically the cause of death, that she didn't stab him or anything crazy like that. During Tuesday's press conference, Sergeant Hulls called Coleman's arrest bittersweet. Now, I'm just going to stop right here and say, literally, if you know people that have children and you suspect they have mental health problems and they're not being medicated for it, it might be a good idea to keep an eye on them Um, just because um, people who have mental health conditions, if they're not treating them, it can put whoever they're caring for in danger as well as the person doing the caring 